why every time we use fullers, I always hit the terry. I don't know why. Landon, isn't it? Is that why? It's Landon, isn't it? Right. Right. I, I can't talk like that because I come from the posh part of the UK. Well, actually, I've seen it spelled L A N, like London. I, know, I don't, I don't. Do I say London? I, I suppose. I, you do. You do sound like you're from the, from the cast. But don't I say London? I mean, isn't London O? Oh, uh, London. Uh, uh, London. 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 Yes. Well, Londinium. London. Londinium. Over here in Sweden. <laughs> uh, hello London, and welcome yeah. to uh, Beer Sweden Television, which apparently I've had a letter to sell me. It is television. What, what, since the last episode? Yes. Well, that's good. That, that, and, that, of course, that disproves the myth that we take them all at once. Exactly. And, and, and if anyone's wondering why I'm wearing the same jumper that I've been wearing for the last three episodes... It's because you're a dirty bastard. No, it's because I have two of them. Oh. One of them's in the wash. OK. Um, today, we're going to be trying a beer from the, from the motherland, Trev. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about it because... I like, this is from Fuller's of course, and Fuller's is from Chiswick and that's West London, that's posh, the posh part of London, you don't come from there, you come from there, less posh. But I still think, because they do London Pride, I think, you think it's proper London? Proper London. Well, they're actually one of the few London brewers now, there mm. are some new craft brewers actually that are coming through now from London, Colonel being one of them, Camden Town being another one for instance, uh, who are really making a name for themselves and putting beer back into London as it were, uh, but Fuller's of course is one of the old sort of big boys, uh, or the last of the, really, of the big boys. Uh, when young, basically, plug it off. And pretty re reliable, in my opinion. Yeah, very solid beers, of course. ESB, we go on about them a mm. lot, but ESB, London Pride, obviously, are the ones that you see a lot of. But they do a lot of these sort of uh, Golden Pride, as well as another one in the system, Belaga. Um, I like that they do this. Yeah, I like it that they do this, don't you? I like it, I like the box, I like the concept. Yeah. Of course, the vintage ale that we've tried, we tried at Christmas Yeah, time. that was lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I've got a few bottles of that aging away somewhere. This is another one. Past Masters. That's yep. another one that we've another sort of one of those very It's not this series. serious, do you know what I mean? They're serious and they're exploring even in a traditional context. That's what I like about it. I mean like you it's gonna I mean? be controversial, but you wouldn't get Spengers putting all the effort in, would you? No, and I think what they're doing, they're really going for it because they're, they're not mucking around, they're spending a lot of yep. money on packaging and so on. It's a cool concept. This is the beer that came out on first of Feb. I uh, don't know whether there's any bottles left there now by the time you've seen uh, this. Uh, just quickly, sure. how, how much would that cost in considering all the package and everything? 59, something That's like that. not bad. Like what? Not bad at all. Absolutely not. Um, I'm a little bit confused with the lime, sort of, it looks like mojitos or something like that. I'm a bit okay. confused with that. I think it's a bit sort of like green Guacamole. goblin. Guacamole. It's a bit green goblin to me. Mm. Uh, but um, but um, having said that, let's open it up, shall we, and have a look and see what's inside. Well, I tell you a little bit about, yeah, it's green, uh, a little bit about the, uh, shall I hold it up for you? A little bit about the bottle itself. Look, nice little, little strap thing here going on. Very oh, yeah. premium. I, I've very really premium. got not a bad word to say about me. No. And if you look at the back, if you just stay there, Jeff, and I do a little spinny spin, numbered bottles, look, cool, isn't it? Really I mean, nice. it might be 50,000, but even still. It doesn't matter, it's still got a number on it. I like that. Uh, now, I don't know terribly much about this beer, other than the fact that this is number three in a series of Brewers Reserves. I was lucky enough to try number two at the Great British Beer Festival in 2000 and I think it was. I was up there queuing. I remember there's a billion people in there, and I was about fourth in line actually. Uh, and I tried the number two. Uh, and to be honest with you, I was a little bit let down by it. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't really blown away by it, I have to be honest with you. It was a little bit sort of spiritous. Uh, I'm going to read to you what's on the back of the box because basically everything you need to know is here. Uh, Brewers Reserve number three has been aged uh, for over 800 days, Trev. How long's that? It's like two years, three Two and a bit two, years, isn't it? Two and a bit years. Uh, in, um, oh bloody hell, in uh, whiskey casks. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, no, they're in whiskey casks uh, from Alchen Trushan, which I presume is, well, it's obviously it's Scottish, uh, and I've got no idea what it is or where it is or, or anything. Um, what I'll do is I'll... Maybe Kipping can leave a comment. I'll, st I'll stick some stuff up about it. Uh, which is the, oh here, it's the last, is, <laughs> is the, I should carry on reading really, shouldn't I, yeah, before right. I actually start promising stuff. Uh, it's the last surviving traditional Glasgow, Glasgow uh, malt whiskey distillery using oak casks that originally contained bourbon. Okay, 800 days Trev, very very interesting. Over the long aging period the casks have infused warm honey and spicy ginger notes into the beer. These combined with a rich malt body and pleasant sharp fruitiness of the base beer uh, res is resulting in a wonderfully complex bottle conditioned ale, all exceptional beer in the finest traditions of brewing and blending. There we have it. Well, once again, you can tell they're not mucking about. I mean, if they're, if they're willing 
from London to build a pipeline all the way up to Scotland just to make one beer and then pump it up there so they can distill it and then pump it all the way back down. It's quite a big job, isn't it? Oh. Oh, blimey, look at that. Uh, Not often you see that on this show. Uh, Trev, I would say we've got a bit of a, we've got a, bit of a gusher here, Trev. Got uh, a bit of a gusher, mate? Can I say I'm getting whiskey notes? <laughs> I'm getting whiskey notes. Now, why did it do that? Well, it's bottle condition, Trevor. Oh, right. Well, bottle okay. condition means. I thought maybe you'd been running around with <laughs> it. It is still live, and I can testify to this fact. I think we've just proven it. Um, so, there we go. I think this is almost like a public health uh, service uh, announcement here, Trevor, isn't it? Be careful if when you open it. You bought one of these bottles. Open it over bottles. the sink. When you open it, make sure you open it over the sink. This isn't just about room temperature, actually. Um, so, which is kind of how I like, normally like these sorts of beers. Um, so really this is a very lively beer. So just uh, bear that in mind next time. Um, now in terms of the beer itself, let's have a, let's have a little look at the, uh, the colour. Uh, once again we've got this very nice brassy, coppery sort of, or slightly tarnished sort of uh, head to it. Sm uh, body to it, small head actually, quite fizzy. I think you can hear that and see that. Uh, very tight, small little bubbles disappearing uh, fairly quickly. In terms of alcohol here, uh, we're up to 9% ABV, kind of reflecting, I think, in the head of the beer. Trev's been very, very kind, actually. He's just popped up and got some kitchen paper here. Look, um, it's live, Trev. You know this is live, don't you? Because well, if, if this wasn't live... We'd have cut it out. We'd have cut it out, wouldn't we? Yeah. We, we wouldn't leave this sort of stuff. Of course not. We, Trev, of course we're far it? too professional. Because, we're, because we're, you know, it would look unprofessional, which is not what we are, is it? Um, in terms of, I think half the beer has actually now been uh, lost, Trev. But anyway, we'll uh, solve it. Has it become varnish? It's become varnish, actually. It's a nice little gleam on that now. Look at that, look at that. It's great stuff. Um, anyway, in terms of the nose, I don't really have to get... To, oh, blimey. I say I don't have to get that close to it to get the whiskey or the sort of boribund notes to it. But there's a lot of that going on. Ginger, little bit, tiny little bit of that. Um, but there's this very sherry-like sort of note to it. Trev, you've got to actually have a little sniff of that because you've got you're very good with sherry and, and Madeira and that sort of thing. Pick it up quite quick. Yeah, absolutely. Can you get that? Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Lots of sweet. And uh, that's not doesn't make me that makes me a bit apprehensive. Does it really? Uh, it's quite sweet sherry as well, isn't it? It's quite mm. sweet sherry notes. Now listen, we're opening this the day you know obviously uh, the, the same month that it's come out of the system Belaga. It's nine percent. It can be aged. It's been aged for 800 days, for goodness sake. Uh, you can actually hold on for a bit longer. So it'll be interesting to try this and see whether it can age a little bit more. There's some strange kind of fruity notes to it and sherry, basically. An awful lot of sherry going on. But do you remember that when we chased it at Christmas, we had a dodgy nose, like, a, a, a dip, not what you were expecting, yeah. yeah. Okay, spontaneously, don't like it. Really? Mm. I have to say, a little bit disappointing. Uh, Give us a go while we're on camera. Um, it's still quite fizzy. It feels it feels it feels a little bit unbelievably young in terms of its mouth feel, um, and it's got yeah, it's a bit tizery, isn't it? Tizery in the mouth in the mouth feel. Mm, it got the cast thing definitely there. A lot of wood, uh, kind of like wood and and and, and, and sherry, uh, sweet. Lucasade. And then and fizzy, isn't mm. it? Fizzy. Mm. Um, well, that, well, that's just... really kind of kind of the feeling you want from it. You're expecting this elegance and this sort of that statement, state, sort of quite a, a rich sort of um, upper class sort of body to it. I would have imagined. Well, with, considering with the, the build-up, packaging and the and the whole thing. The build-up we was giving all this patriotic nonsense. You're going to get it quite a spritzy. And it's and it's not, it's not lived up to it. No, it's not. No, it's quite thin at the end no. there. I'm a bit disappointed with that, actually, I have to say. Um, Ageing, yeah, probably. But would it make much difference, really? I'm sure, really, because it's actually not that sweet up front, to be honest with you, now thinking about it. Don't know, to be honest. Fair enough, let's Jury's be completely out. honest. But we we'll London or not. shoot from the hip, don't we? We shoot from the hip. Uh, in terms of rating, um, 3.2. Really? I would have said a couple Three. and a half, to be honest. Two and a half, you not, go that low? Not, yeah, really. I tell you, let's go somewhere in the middle, because 3.2 may be too high. Right, let's go three. Mm. We'll go three on this one. A bit disappointing, Trev, don't you mm, think? Especially really. from the motherland. Mm. Anyway, until the next episode, everyone, where I will change my shirt. Cheers and beers.